Scarlet and Violet only have three gift Pokemon you can obtain in a single playthrough. So I'm going to attempt to beat the game using only those three Pokemon, in addition to using no items in battle, playing on set mode, and no overleveling. Now for my first big decision. I can only pick one starter, so I need to choose wisely. Sprigatito, which by the way is my favorite of the three, shares a common weakness with our third gift Pokemon when it reaches its final evolution. Boy, Coco is weak to ground, just like our soon-to-be mystery gift Pikachu, thus leaving me with Quaxley for a good mix of defensive and offensive options. Who would you all choose? I then befriend our futuristic friend Miraidon to better traverse Paldea. Wait, how did a sandwich cure you? You're a robot! Shortly after, I arrive at the first Pokemon Center, which activates my online capabilities to receive the mystery gift Pikachu. In this game, you can access the movie learner right away via the menu, so I teach Pikachu Nasty Plot. This special attack boosting move will be a huge help throughout the whole game. What makes this mystery gift Pikachu special is it comes with the move Fly. Looks like it just flew up in Willy Wonka's glass elevator. And it has the flying Terra typing too. As for the third gift Pokemon, I won't be able to obtain it until much later in the story. So we're stuck with these two for now. Once Director Clavel finally releases us from school, I change out of that hideous summer uniform and enter a nearby Delibird present store to shop for a sharp beak. I then head straight for the first gym to challenge the bug specialist Katie. Terrestrializing Pikachu is the obvious choice here to power up his fly attacks, squashing each of her pathetic little little bugs. I know you're supposed to only use bug types, Katie, but you actually would have had a chance if you didn't change your Teddy Ursa into a bug type. No way. No way. Sue yourself. As for me, I head back to Mesa Goza near the school to buy a couple more things, Mystic Water and Wise Glasses. Then after some training, Quaxly evolves into Quaxwell. This new form, along with the Mystic Water increasing the power of our water type moves, prepares us for our first Titan battle. Going out for an all-out powerful attack your first turn against Cloth can put you in a rough spot because its Anger Shell ability activates when its HP drops below 50%. This raises its attack power and speed, but I'm not worried because thanks to Quaxwell's Aqua Jet, we can attack first no matter their speed since Aqua Jet is a priority move and Anger Shell also weakened the Titan's defenses. Now every Titan has a second phase after eating an Herba Mystica, making it stronger than before. <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry though, since Arvin Shelter joins our side, splashing even more water attacks at the Rock Beast. I am still confused how this robotic creature is eating food. Arvin isn't too pleased about it either. As I try to progress to my next destination, I accidentally fall into one of Team Star's bases. They promptly kick me out because I jumped in like a maniac rather than ringing the doorbell. Out! I think he's jealous. How pathetic. I didn't want to face Team Star yet anyways. I wanted to get my second gym badge, so I went straight into battle with the grass gym leader, Brassius. His first two mons are harmless plants, while his ace is a pseudo wudo with a rock type attack. With that in mind, I didn't change Pikachu into a flying type. However, that made Fly less powerful, which meant it would take two attacks to defeat both Petalil and Smoliv. This gave them each at least one opening to attack my mouse, leaving Pikachu at 16 HP versus pseudo wudo. My whole plan revolved on Pikachu being at full health to be ready to take on the tree. That didn't happen, and Pikachu lost. And Quaxwell didn't stand a chance with Pseudo Wudo being terrestrialized into a grass type using Trailblaze. I had no choice but to terrestrialize Pikachu into a flying type. Unlike my first attempt, this enabled Pikachu to knock out Petalil and Smoliv with just one fly each. Then Pseudo Wudo appeared again. I nuzzled, paralyzing them. Luck was on my side too, as Brassius's Pokemon couldn't move that same turn. Pikachu then used fly, inflicting just under 50% of their HP. Pseudo Wudo couldn't move again due to paralysis. Pikachu flies up, slamming them once more, this time getting a critical hit, ending the battle. Having two gym badges unlocks the languages class. This marks the beginning of our quest to attain the third gift Pokemon. But before going to school, this video sponsors War Thunder, the most in-depth vehicle combat game ever made. With over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships, PvP battles will never grow stale. The vehicles are incredibly detailed and modeled to their historic inspirations, making this a highly immersive combat experience that you can play on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, or last-gen consoles. On PC, the barrier to entry is low because all you need to fly any aircraft is a mouse and keyboard. The vast collection of vehicles span over 100 years of development since 1920. Before YouTube, I was actually planning on becoming a 
Navy pilot. But now I can experience the thrill of flying on the side while still making videos. So go play War Thunder now and make sure you use my link to get a massive free bonus pack including vehicles, boosters, and more. Thanks War Thunder. Now back to school. Salvatore is our teacher. And as you can see here, the barber messed up his haircut. Here's what happened. Just two seconds, no, right? One time to go. I Wait. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I am. You know, my bad, uh, brother. I skipped you. And um, you know what? Why don't you just let me fade you up? That's it for language class, and I'll need more badges to unlock the rest. But before the next gym, a titan must be taken down. And what is with that apron? Do you work at Home Depot? No, I just wear the apron to pick up chicks. Pikachu's main role here is to paralyze the bird by nuzzling it. He does pull off one thunder shock before going down, though. Then Quaxwell comes in to finish the job with a couple Aqua Jets. Whoa, I didn't realize I wouldn't get a chance to heal in between phases. Turns out this is the only Titan that doesn't allow you to. So all I have for the second round is an injured Quaxwell. If Bombardier targeted me every single one of its turns, I would have been a goner for sure. Thankfully, the b b b b b bird Bird is so dumb. They attacked Arvin's Knockley most of the time and only struck Quaxwell with one pluck. In the end, she barely made it out alive. <laughs> I still don't understand. A part of the story I haven't tackled yet is Team Star. There is a slight problem though. I never knew this, but I guess you're not allowed to challenge Team Star unless you have at least three Pokemon in your party. Well, what am I supposed to do now? Team Star has set up a roadblock. I zoom past the base to Cascarafa to purchase a held item that wasn't available until now, leftovers. Then I head to the third gym location, Lavincia. And this is where our team gets a major upgrade since there's just a Thunderstone chilling on the ground here. This evolves our Terra Fly Pikachu into a Terra Fly Raichu. I also wanted to teach it the TM Protect, but I was short a few Pokemon parts, specifically Lechonk Hairs and Scatterbug Powder. I'm sorry, Nicolas Cage. I have no other choice. Before taking on the gym, my rival Nimona interrupts my journey with a battle. To get back at her for wasting my time, I give her a taste of what Raichu is now capable of. Pommy strikes Raichu while he nasty plots, but Raichu doesn't have a care in the world being hit since he can heal 1 16th of his health each turn with leftovers. And electric types don't get in his way either since he also has the move Draining Kiss. That's just a sneak peek at what Raichu is going to do to Iono's electric types. Wait a minute! No, no, no. Raichu's gonna have to play this one a little dirty since Quaxwell is essentially useless for this fight. Watro's moves chip barely any damage off my mouse, which means he can increase his invasiveness all day. I could do this all day. Don't forget those three nasty plots either. Then the power of love kicks in with Draining Kiss, knocking out Wattrell and Luxio, each with only one hit. Even at max power, Belly Bolt is still a tanky fellow, staying within the green HP range. He retaliates with Water Gun, which pisses Raichu off, landing a critical at Draining Kiss the following turn. Iono's ace, Miss Magius, suffers a similar fate to her chubby friend, falling to the kisses of death. Third gym badge is ours. You know what that means. More schoolwork. More classes become available. I attended the lectures, took the midterm, sucked up to the teacher, yada yada yada, guy doesn't know that potions heal Pokemon, wham bam, thank you ma'am, we're done with that for now. Let's go slay that Orthworm Titan. I led with Quaxwell because this whole time I thought Orthworm was a steel and ground type. I don't know, I just thought that Earth Eater meant something similar to fire types with flash fire and some water types with storm drain. I still go with the special attack water pulse since Orthworm is much weaker on the special defensive side. Unfortunately, right before Quaxwell was able to land the final blow, Orthworm's third Iron Tail slammed my duck back into her Pokeball. Well, now that I know it's not part ground type, Raichu can actually do something here. So for the second phase, Raichu starts things off by nerfing the Titan's attack stat with three charms. There's no way we're going down now unless the giant lands a critical hit. So I have Raichu Thunderbolt away, successfully soloing the Titan until it's defeated. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. Next up is the gym leader, Kofu, whose spirit animal seems to be the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. I'm late. I'm late. For a very important date. No time to say hello. Goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. Slow down, bub. I'm here to return your wallet. So let's get this battle started, for goodness sake. Before challenging Kofu, I equipped Raichu with the magnet. With its shocking power boost, I only needed one nasty plot to start sweeping every one of his Pokio. Let's redo that. 
As I was saying, Raichu swept through every single one of his water types, halfway done with the gym challenge. While training for the next one, Quaxwell evolved into Quaxwell. Ha! <laughs> hey! No! Stop! Just calm down! Don't do it! Seriously though, this final evolution reminds me of Silvando from Dragon Quest XI. If you haven't played it, you're missing out. Anyways, let's move on to my favorite character in this game, Gym Leader Larry. Working for the corporate overlords? Yeah, I can relate, dude. Since Quaquavel gained the fighting type from its new evolution, she's the perfect counter for Larry's normal types. I have her begin with a workup to increase her attack while Kamala yawns at us. I work up once more, then we fall asleep. I was expecting this to happen, which is why I gave Quaquavel a chesto berry to hold before beginning this fight, awakening her from sleep. But instead of a fighting move, I use her signature move, Aqua Step, which not only KOs the Kamala, but also increases our speed, which will come in handy later. Larry's second Pokemon is the Dunsparce, who goes down with one low sweep, and now his final Pokemon is here, Staraptor. The chef whips up the cutscene to get everyone hyped for the finale, yet all I do is low sweep again to take home the win. Sorry for the anticlimactic ending, everyone. At the gym's reception, Nimona and the Paldea champion Gita congratulate me on my recent win. Oh, you want a taste of Quaquavel's wrath, Namona? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> the ironic thing about schooling Namona was that I had to go back to school myself to enroll in the new language courses. Salvatore tested us on our knowledge of Pikachu's. Easy. P that's Gigantamax Pikachu. Salvatore then updates me on the Pommy he healed with a potion earlier, and I pretended to care. Off to the snowy mountains I go, and it's already time for another gym fight. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet really feel like a boss rush game, especially when you can't challenge Team Star. Hold on a second while I drop some bars. Rapper Rhyme is next up in the gym leader queue. Duck and mouse are gonna play, it takes two. Yes sir, yes sir, all I need are two moves. Aqua Step and Thunderbolt are my groove. In this gym, it's important to get that very first KO. Cause your fans in the crowd will give you a boost, Ayo. But the pesky little Mimikyu got my right eye chew. It's okay, little buddy, I ain't mad at you. Rhyme, your older sister time should be ashamed. Are you even a rapper or is that self-proclaimed? Let's switch the genre up from rap to some heavy metal. Iron Treads. Okay, Cool Quavel, calm down, girl. Take it easy on the giant Dawn fan. It never stood a chance in the first place. Right before taking on the seventh gym, Nimona halts our progress once again with no new additions to her team. So this would probably be a good time to recap. So far, we have beaten six gym leaders, four attacks on Titans, and yet no team star base is conquered because we still only have two Pokemon. But that will all change after battling Tulip, the seventh gym leader. So let's get into it. Step aside, Cool Quavel, and let Raichu take the stage. Okay, admittedly, there's no new strategy strategy here. Raichu nasty plots, then dodges fairy giraffes, then headbutt, which means he can increase his special attack two more times, barely surviving the following two zen headbutts that actually connect. Raichu heals up with two smooches, then shocks the remaining of Tulip's Pokemon with Thunderbolts. Seven gym badges unlock the language's class final exam, which reminds me of how pathetically easy my community college classes were back in the day. At last, give me the Galarian Meowth. This Steel-typed variant has joined at the perfect time to take down the final gym leader. But first, some unfinished business with Team Star. Giacomo, you should have let us in earlier and you would have had a fair fight. As for Mila and Atticus, I sort of feel bad for them. Nonetheless, it is what it is. Quaquavel, destroy them. Now it's time for our Meowth to get some attention while up in the mountains. First by evolving into a Berserker, then challenges Grusha, the Ice Gym Leader. Now I know Frostmoth likes to Tailwind right away, and if I crush the bug too early, its succeeding partners will benefit from the speed boost. So I take this time to use Iron Defense, which increases Berserker's defense by two stages. Then do it again the second turn, but first get a Blizzard blown in our faces. As you can see, even with it not being very effective, Berserker doesn't have a special defense stat worth writing home about. So I have him Protector during the third turn of Tailwind being up to safely heal a bit from leftovers. Now with the Tailwind about to expire at the end of the fourth turn, I terrestrialize Berserker, who then dodges the Blizzard, and she then wipes out Frostmoth with a single Iron Head. Grusha sends in Beartig next, who doesn't stand a chance since it has no Tailwind to speed it up. So from here, Berserker simply uses Iron Head and Protect the rest of the match, resulting in a clean first victory for my feline. That concludes my time in the mountains for the rest of this playthrough. As I descend down to the 
nearby star base. Ortega, the boss here, specializes in fairy type Pokemon, so naturally you'd think I'd solo him with Berserker. Well, you'd be right if his first two Pokemon didn't wield the move Charm. You've seen me use it with Raichu before, so you know it can nerf Berserker into a useless attacker. Thus, Raichu will be in control of the reins at first. Thunderbolting Azumarill. The blue Pikachu mouse retaliates with a brutal play rough, so I have Raichu finish it off the next turn with a draining kiss, although he's still at low health, so I change my plan by swapping in Berserker in early. Thankfully, Wigglytuff is slower, which means Berserker can use Taunt on them first, negating the use of non-damaging moves like Charm. However, Wigglytuff wasn't planning on weakening us anyways, attacking with Play Rough, which also unfortunately got the 10% chance of lowering our attack stat in the process. Well, if they want to bombard us with physical attacks, I'll command Berserker to start using Iron Defense, and so my little Viking did. Once her bulk was maxed, I terrestrialized Berserker so she could shift into an all-out offensive mode. The first Iron Head flinches, so the second one pops a balloon Pokemon. And just when I thought I was done with the attack lowering crap, Dox Bun comes in with baby doll eyes, helping it live in Iron Head. Berserker, get that thing out of here or so help me. The last duel of this match was a slow one. With Berserker's attack stat being dropped along with its accuracy and now being confused from Rev of Room's Confuse Ray, slowly but surely our cat chipped away at the vehicle's health bar and it didn't matter if we got unlucky with a miss or hitting ourselves in confusion because the Starmobile's attack did such little damage to us and couldn't land critical hits thanks to Berserker's battle armor ability. That leaves me with only one Titan and one Team Star boss before reaching the story finales. For now, Dondozo may not be the real Titan, but that massive HP stat scares me. So I had Quaquavel flex her new feather dance move she learned at level 52 to weaken the attack power of Dondozo, since Raichu is weaker on the defensive side. But I was afraid for nothing because my electric mouse sparked major damage onto the massive catfish. Did I even need Quaquavel? No, no I didn't. I wasted my time. <laughs> The real Titan reveals himself, and this one is a real Dragon type. Or False Dragon Titan. Whatever. I set up a nasty plot with Raichu first. Tatsugiri seems to have noticed, so it targets my Pokemon rather than Arvin's. Wanting to give Arvin's greed another chance to attack, I used Protect the second turn. Then I had Raichu use Draining Kiss, which is not only super effective, but provides some healing for us as well. I wasn't sure if another Smooch would secure the KO, so I switched in Quaquavel to resist the incoming water attacks, then kicked the Dragon out of there with a low sweep. The last Earth Herba Mystica was ours, which Arvin used to make a delicious sandwich for his Mabostiff, healing the hound of his injuries, concluding the most heart-touching story any Pokemon game has given us. Well, for the mainline games at least. Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky had some great moments that got you in the feels. We go from heartwarming to battling the biggest KISS fan in history. Ding. How long has it been since we made Raichu a flying type? Let's change that here and now. Raichu, use fly. Dret. Didn't get the kill. And the poison jab hurt pretty bad too. Then the Toxic Toxicroak tried to be sneaky by sucker punching us, but luckily Raichu hung in there beating Eri's first Pokemon. Unfortunately, we couldn't one-hit KO her Annihilate either, resulting in the loss of Raichu. It gets worse with Quaquabble. She's slower than the ape, which means she'll have to eat a close combat before getting the KO. There's no way she could solo the rest and Berserker didn't fare well against the fighting types. The issue was clear to me. My Raichu tended to be a stronger special attacker rather than physical. And generally speaking, fighting types are weaker on the special defensive side of things. The problem? Fly is a physical attack. I needed to use a new TM that was introduced in Gen 9. Terra Blast! This is an 80 base power move that remains a special attack if it's the higher of your two attack stats. You know what that means. Nasty plot time! Also, the Terra Blast matches the type of your terrestrialized form. So that's lights out for Toxicrope, Annihilate, Pessimian, and Lucario. Okay, two hits for Lucario. For Revivroom, I used Draining Kiss first to restore our HP, helping us live their spin out attack. All that was left to do was to Terra Blast once more, dethroning the fifth Team Star boss. All the main objectives for the three main storylines are complete. Just need to bookend each of them with a few more battles to discover the real final boss. And some of these are going to be pretty easy. Quaquavel bulks up multiple times, then sweeps Arvin's entire party with Aqua Steps, Acrobatics, and Close Combats. For Director Clavel, it all just depended on what his Orangaroo did while my Raichu sped up with agility and nasty plotted. The Orangutan 
Tang used foul play once, got paralyzed for coming in contact with our static ability, yawned to my mouse, then used reflect. Raichu fell asleep after his third nasty plot, but was holding the Chesto Berry to wake up from it. Thunderbolts and flying Terra Blast galore until Meow Scarada arrived. I learned the hard way from my first time I challenged Clavel that Meow Scarada outsped my Raichu, which is why I had Raichu use agility the first turn of this match to not make that mistake again. Now bow down before the overwhelming might of Team Star's founder! Nope, not your style, girl. I didn't feel any bit of fear when you said that. This is just like Director Clavel's battle, except Umbreon is a lot less threatening compared to the Orangaroo. So, Thunderbolt, 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 fly! Draining Kiss and Thunderbolt. Raichu doesn't take home the cake, though. I thought he had it, but Sylveon pulled off a last-second quick attack by the skin of her teeth. Too bad for you, Penny. I have a Berserker. Oh, hey, look. The Team Star bosses love you for who you really are. Yada, yada, yada. Arvin's story was better. And what is this? Zero out of ten story. Crazy thing is that's just the beginning of this final game gauntlet of battles. Now begins the Elite Four. First up is Rika, representing the ground types. It's important to terrestrialize Quaquavel into a pure water type to discourage them from using Future Sight. A couple bulk ups later, and this is your standard sweep with Aqua Steps. I don't think she's going to need to worry about fulfilling her step quota for today. However, for Claude's Ire, we go for the close combat because the Spiny Fish has Water Absorb as its ability. Next up is Poppy. I am going to make this little girl's life so miserable, she'll wish she didn't conform to the child labor laws of Paldea. So how do I do that? I nerf Copperaja's attack stat to zilch with three charms. Just look at how pathetic that super effective high horsepower is. Her elephant's attacks feel like tiny scratches, especially with the six bulk ups and leftovers healing each turn. The only mon of hers I felt somewhat threatened by was Magnezone. So what does Poppy have it do? A light screen. What in the world is your education level, Poppy? Aqua steps in close combats all around the house. She's done for. Elite member number three. Hello, it's me, Larry. What an entrance. It brings me no joy battling you, Larry. A man who is forced to work his dead-end job to the man? I have the utmost respect for you. But for now, Terra Flying Raichu will decimate your Tropius. Draining Kiss will cause your Altaria to die of cooties. And Thunderbolt will electrocute the rest of your birds. Thank you. Think, think. Hassle the Dragon Master, the final member of the Elite Four. Raichu, be careful out there, son. You will Nasty Plot like you always do, but that Super Fang doesn't care about your defenses. So Nasty Plot not because you want to, but because you have to. And now, fate will decide the rest. You better thank your maker for that luck, Raichu, and the fact that he has blessed you with a fairy move to counter these dragons. Dragalgy is part poison, though, meaning it's not weak to draining kiss. So give them a flying Terra Blast to the face. Gah, it's survived. Well, what comes next after Dragalgy? Haxorus and Falapple? Okay, our health bar is gonna be okay. It's the blasted Baxcalibur you need to watch out for. Its bulk is too thick to one shot with draining kiss, and I think we may have been too greedy with terrestrializing into a flying type. My son, I have failed you. Your sister Quaquavel shall avenge you. The Elite Four has been defeated. And now champion Gita awaits. Her diverse team forces me from performing a cheesy sweep strategy. So we'll start with Berserker. We must attack right away because to spot their signature move, Lumina Crash, cuts our special defense in half with just one strike. That's insane. Thankfully, Berserker resists psychic moves, but the next one is going to deal twice as much damage. Well, it would have if my Quick Claw didn't activate. Oh! Oh man, we so take those strokes of luck. Gita's next Pokemon is Avalug. I thought this would be a good opportunity to set up an iron defense, although I'm not sure how worth it it was. As you can see, that body press damage is not to be trifled with. So I have Berserker bash to the iceberg with a couple iron heads before being flattened to zero HP. All right, Raichu, how far will you make it? Avalug goes down to a Thunderbolt, then we're confronted by the Bisharp evolution, King Gambit. I think doing one nasty plot will be worth it. Holy crap! Raichu! Thunderbolt! 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 Oh no! Yeah, baby! That was clutch, Raichu! Get him out of here! Oh, thank goodness the next one is gonna go. What a breather. Flying blast that farm animal back to its barn. Veluza 2? Ah, nice. Another easy one. All that's left is her Glamora. Raichu, can you handle this?
Nope. Gita, you were the only trainer in the Pokemon League that I needed all three of my Pokemon for. Yet in the end, you still lose. I am now crowned a champion. But we do not grant you the rank of master. Really, Nimona? You're gonna pull a Mace Windu on me when all I have to do is my super duper easy bulk up strategy then plow through your team with Aqua Steps in close combats? I'm sorry, but all of my battles with you have been anything but challenging. Just meet Arvin and I at Area Zero and let's get flying. I slide down to the bottom of the crater, make it to Professor Turo's lab, find out he's a robot, Insert the Violet Book to stop the time machine and initiate the final boss Pokemon battle. His team is filled with Pokemon from the future, all filled with great stats. I had to lose a few times to figure out what worked and what didn't. I even made it to his last Pokemon one time, but totally screwed the pooch where I must have had some brain fart, clicking the weaker attack when a Thunderbolt would have killed the Iron Valiant. There was no room for mistakes. So I attempted to save Paudia once more. Iron Moth was faster than my starter, but I just needed her to not fail from the discharge. One aqua step from us squishes the robotic larva and boosts our speed. This newfound quickness enables Quaquavel to knock out Iron Bundle with one close combat. Next was one of Professor Turo's toughest paradox Pokemon, Iron Hands. I switched in Berserker to eat the fake out, then use fake tears the next turn, harshly lowering their special defense. Berserker then got clocked by a drain punch, procking her useless citrus berry to be eaten. What matters though is she can pull off one more fake tears before being punched to death. With two Pokemon Pokemon left, I bring in Raichu. Even with Iron Hands' lowered special defense, I learned from previous attempts that it still wasn't enough due to its natural bulkiness. Thus, a nasty plot was needed, and Drain Punch deals a scary amount of damage. Thanks to their massive HP, though, the one-hit knockout with Draining Kiss fully recovered Raichu. However, all those hit points aren't enough to save Raichu from an earthquake from Iron Thorns. This is where I get to flex a cool use of terrestrialization in a defensive way, rather than the usual offensive method. Now that Raichu is a flying type, the incoming earthquake has no effect, allowing us to Thunderbolt, then Volt Switch the following turn to pivot in Quaquavel, whose fighting type resists Iron Thorn Stone Edge. See, every decision matters in this fight. Now Quaquavel not only knocks out the Mecha Godzilla like creature, but also gets that crucial speed boost to outrun the Iron Juggalus. Close combat doesn't take home the win here, but it does set up the path of victory for Raichu, who comes back in after the fall of our starter partner. Draining Kiss forces Turo to recall Iron Juggalus and send out his ace, Iron Valiant. What makes this thing so scary is its held item, Booster Energy, activating its quark drive ability, giving its attacks data boost. It all came down to this. That perfectly timed paralysis was just the luck we needed to beat Pokemon Violet with only gift Pokemon. There's technically a fourth gift Pokemon, that being the Miraidon you have the whole game, but the only time you battle with it during the main story is this finale where you use bullcrap friendship to save the day. Remember to download War Thunder. It's a great way to support my channel for free while having fun in the process. Just make sure to use my link to get a large free bonus pack including multiple premium vehicles, premium account boosters, and much more. For more, subscribe subscribe, give the video a like to support the video, and thank you to my patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs. You all have a good one. Thanks.